Hi! So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can repair a top stitch in vinyl that has a skipped stitch. This also works in fabric. The good thing about fabric is like, well, fabric as in like a woven or a felt or something. You don't have to worry about um, trying to get the needle into the exact same holes as before, whereas with vinyls and leathers, um, it's going to um, basically leave these permanent holes that you can't really fix without some really dodgy work. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to strive to do in this video is show you both on my domestic machine and on the industrial machine. The reason I'm going to do that is because the industrial machine is probably going to be a little better at having a consistent result in terms of it's uh, the stitch length. So usually with my Juki, I don't have to worry about where the needle is gonna go. I don't have to like guide it too much. Um, as opposed to like a domestic machine, I can't just put the needle in one of the holes and know that consistently it's gonna hit the remainder of the holes. A lot of this also depends on the thickness of the area where you had the skipped stitch. Sometimes if the area is thicker, it may struggle over it and it may not consistently stitch, regardless of if it's a domestic or a, an industrial. So I'm gonna show you on both and I'm showing you with some really neat vinyl I actually got from a Joann's. It's gonna be really shiny. So um, I'm doing this with black vinyl and light gray thread. So hopefully you can actually see the details. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the industrial machine. We're gonna start off with that one first. Um, and I would say I do have a compound walking foot that's built into this machine. So I don't have to worry about using a specialized Teflon foot or roller foot for the vinyl. So that's something to consider when you start looking at something else. So we'll start here and I'm just going to stitch a bit. And then I'm going to fake a skipped stitch by cranking up my stitch length like that and then go back down. I'm using like a 4.5 stitch length just so it's easier to see. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to just roll up and snip this. Now typically with a, a skipped stitch, what'll happen, because it's very hard for me to fake these things, but what'll happen is you'll have this longer, this one longer stitch, and it, it may not even skip, but it may look like you're know, just like a really long stitch in comparison with the other stitches. And so it'll be a little more loose. It may um, you know, look disconnected, and also it just looks a little bit um, sloppy, right? So usually what you'll do is you'll see that it's just a really long stitch and it made a puncture hole, but it, the bobbin thread didn't catch it. Now there's a couple of things that you need to check. Again, regardless of machine, you need to make sure that you have a new needle. So always change the needle first. I usually change a needle between my projects depending on the size. So if I'm doing a wristlet, I'll do two wristlets and then I'll change the needle. If I'm doing a larger bag, I change it when I'm done with the project. This just ensures the needle is not necessarily the problem. It doesn't mean it isn't the problem, but it kind of isolates that, you know, removes that whole option. Um, and then, um, you know, the other thing is like, you may want to take a hammer to the area and hammer it down, um, especially if it's really thick. This is just two layers of vinyl, so it's not really, you know, causing any issues. So, on to the actual fix. Okay, I like to take these really nice little snips, something like this. These are by Femore, there are others. Um, I wouldn't use snips like this. These let you get close to the fabric, but not under it. These are actually curved. Let me make sure I'm showing the curve on the camera here. So they're a little curved like embroidery scissors. You can also use embroidery scissors to kind of get under there. And so let's just target this one. I actually did two stitches like this. So I'm just going to snip, snip and remove the bad stitch. And I'll go along the back. Let's just pretend this, you know, well, I mean, we don't have to pretend it is the back. It is the back. So there we go. We'll just, we'll just remove the whole ding dang thing here. 
because the whole point of the skipped stitch is it didn't actually buckle here and grab the bobbin thread. So now you're like, great, I have a hole. Not such a big deal, again, if you have a woven fabric, but these vinyls and leathers, that's a big deal. And you can't really fix that. There are like little tricks, but it'll be extremely obvious. I'm still turning around and just making sure you can see that on the camera. So one of the things that I like to do, and it, this may be arguable, but the, the thing that I will do is actually just go back one hole you don't need to go back all the way or anything like just one hole and gently set the needle down into it. So I'll go up here, I'll put this in and I'll start to use the wheel. My wheel is over this way and I'll just gently hand crank into one stitch behind and just make sure that I set the needle directly into that hole and go halfway, just halfway down. And then, you know, use a stiletto or anything, your fingers, will of God, something to get the thread out of the way so you can see. And I line up everything as I want it. So one of the things I did need to mention is like, because I faked this, the skipped stitch, that stitch length is not actually going to like repair that particular hole. But if you were using a consistent stitch length throughout set at like 4.5 like I did, then that hole would be 4.5 millimeters away and it would be a lot easier. And then what I do is I stitch forward once. And of course, if you want, you can hand crank this. So you, because sometimes people can't control with the foot pedal as well. Um, and so you can hand crank all of this if you feel more comfortable. So I'll do that just, you know, for consistency sake. Put it down once, lift the presser foot, just to double check and see how it's there. And you only get that one doubled up stitch. If anybody notices that, all I'm gonna say is something else is completely wrong with your bag. <laughs> so don't worry about that. That, I, I wouldn't even fuss over that. You can't even tell the difference, right? It's a little doubled up there, but your average buyer is not gonna know or care. Um, so, and then once I've confirmed that it's doing fine and I've done everything else, like change the needle, I maybe have pressed this down with a hammer or steamed it a bit, then I'm just going to sew. And then once I get to the next hole, the next stitch right there, I'm going to hand crank the last one. I'm going to reverse and go back one. And that basically locks it in. And then I'm going to lift everything just like this. I'm going to snip as closely as possible. And you see I'm using these because I can snip closely there. I just can't go underneath. I go underneath and I'll get those. I mean like under, like scoop under and grab it. I mean, and that that's the repaired stitch right there. And now the other thing that you can do at this point is to take a lighter because I'm using nylon thread. So if you're not using bonded nylon, if you're just using cotton, don't worry about it. You're fine. But if you're using like bonded poly or nylon, you want to take a lighter and just very briefly go and, and you can bead zap with a bead zapper or just the lighter and melt it just really quickly. Just whoosh, like, you know, a cat eating a cable of a Christmas tree and hiding under a chair, just whoosh. And there you go. Um, so that's how you repair that. But again, that's with the industrial. So let's take a look with the domestic. Okay, admittedly, this is my third attempt to sew this, to show you and demonstrate, except I forgot that vinyl on a domestic machine without like a walking foot <laughs> doesn't really work. It just stuck there. So this is a good time to basically point out that you can take tissue paper, just like gift wrapping tissue. And actually it would probably be smart if I just wrap the whole thing with it. But I'm just gonna take this tissue paper and wrap around um, so I can just get these initial stitches in place. <laughs> it was horrifying. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and stitch a little. 
like that. Now on this machine, I'm not gonna crank up the stitch length. I've already gotten this far, as far as I can go with this one. I can only go up to five millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just lift the presser foot um, and I'm going to hand crank and jump a doodle do a, a few stitches like that and then continue to stitch from there. Whoa, hey, good demonstration. I think. <laughs> I think the thread got all messed up. It's all jacked. Yeah, so the thread got all jacked up, so I'm just gonna rethread it um, and uh, possibly start over, reconsider my sewing career, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Let's just, let's just go, oh, I'm so used to so, uh, to, to doing that sideways. Wee, abadet, wee. See, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so we'll ignore this. And see, I leave mistakes in the videos just so you know that I have to deal with this crap on the regular too. So don't worry, you're not alone. Um, I probably should have held the thread tail. So I'm gonna hold the thread tail and we're gonna do that again. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm also gonna lower the speed on the machine. And there, we're just gonna go. So I'm going slowly. Okay, now I'm going to lift the presser foot. I'm going to simulate a horrifically skipped stitch that is going to make even a grown man cry. Well, or me, which is pretty similar, let's be honest. Okay, I'm just going to make sure it's like locked in place and then I'm going to use the fancy cutter. I love, I love it like, because like domestic machines come with so many bells and whistles. So you can't really see any of the stitching to understand what happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip off the tissue paper and see it just comes right off of there. And you can see the simulated skip stitch right here, right there. So this is the industrial, you can tell because it's, it's the thicker thread. So same deal on this one is I'm gonna reach up under here and I'm gonna snip away the skipped stitch. You can uh, choose to leave it in the back if you like. Um, I do go to the back and also remove. You can see the bobbin thread kind of got like all up in my business there. But so now I've removed the skipped stitch. I'm gonna grab like a little bit, and this does make this a little more difficult um, to, to do if you have to have, um, you know, the, the paper. So what I suggest is that you hand crank this stuff. So going back, you're gonna go back, make sure you can see, back one whole stitch to its hole. And you might need to get a magnifying glass or a grandchild which I don't have yet, so that's not happening. And I go ahead and now I'm going to stitch forward one. Ooh, catch the stiletto before it rolls off the table and stabs my foot. <laughs> I would like the presser foot to drop now. Okay, I'm gonna roll up a whole stitch. And I may need to do it by hand and that's okay. I'm using the presser foot, so it's kind of like annoying. So, I mean, not the presser foot, but I have a knee lift on this machine. So I'm gonna go down one, and then I'm gonna hit the reverse button. I think it'll hopefully go in reverse. <laughs> I can't tell, I can't tell, hold on. I think you have to actually hold it. So I'm going to go back and slide it forward. I swear there is, it is, this is good. So I let go of the reverse button so that I can come back down into the exact same hole. Boop, like that. Okay. Just like that. Now I can hand crank forward. 
And what I'll do is I would, there would be, if this was a proper skip stitch, there would be a hole in the middle there. So I'm just gonna like kind of poke a little hole so that I have something to kind of aim for, you know, like life goals and stuff. So I've aimed for that hole and I'm going to continue to hand crank very gently while careening my head around. I'm gonna die laughing if I look at this as I'm putting it together and see my head like poking into the camera because it, it, that's how I feel right now. If you need to, you probably could just remove the presser foot so for, you know, brevity's sake. And then, and then put, put that down while you're lifting. And then again, lift and go to the next hole and drop into that hole. Drop the foot. Lift the needle, lift the foot, slide forward to one hole after the skip stitch hole, or skip stitch, it's final hole. And you're gonna, this must be driving people nuts. And you're gonna stitch down one, like that. And then you're gonna reverse and go back one. So I'm going to, And I actually do want to put it in reverse properly on the machine so that it understands how to wind things correctly. Um, I'm praying this looks right. Okay, all right, this is tedious, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully somebody is smarter than me and has a Teflon foot, because I thought I did, and apparently I do not. And there are tricks around it. I just don't happen to have any of those tricks right now. Okay, and then you wanna go through the whole thing proper up to default position and then you can cut. Ta -da! This may be a little doubled over more than I would like or that looks, you know, here and here. Um, but again, it's not terribly bad um, to do that, you only do it in two spaces. And the one thing is like, if you are going to do this and you go back several stitches, then it's obvious. If you only do it in the stitch before and after the skipped stitch, then you're totally fine. Um, hand cranking, definitely on a domestic like this, this is the, my Janome M7 Continental, can be a little tedious as you saw. It was a lot easier when I was over on my industrial, but not all domestics are like this. Rawr. Um, so you should be fine. Cool. So I've shown you how to repair um, a skipped stitch uh, in vinyl on a domestic machine and the industrial machine. Um, that's something I want to strive to do is to try to show you guys on both of those machines how to do things because not everybody has the room or the capacity to have an industrial machine as you can see they're pretty big and they come in their own tables and so it's a little unwieldy it's not pretty typical um, they also can be pretty expensive depending on which model that you get and what you're looking to do with it so um, i do wish i had had a teflon foot but just so you can see this is the final result and in those two little spots on this very small maybe three inch by two inch a business card sample, it is obvious, but when you're talking about a larger product, nobody's gonna notice that, they really won't. They'll pro and, and this will ensure that your top stitch is secure. Um, and I, I bet you that would be a little less noticeable than an actual skip stitch that you leave in the final product. So with that, Feel free to leave comments below, ask more questions. If you want, offer your own options. I know that some people like, would, would prefer to hand stitch and close. That's totally fine too. This is how I do it. Share your story on, on your techniques and your tips for dealing with skipped stitches and vinyl.